Here's something I probably shouldn't say out loud. If it really was about tax the rich and help the middle class, help the poor, why tax the middle class and the poor at all? If it was all about the rich and how much money they hide, which is true, there's a lot there. Um, And it's continuing to divide, and that's what this video is about. I'm going to show just how bad it really is, this wealth divide. But if they cared, why tax the poor at all? I would argue that what has happened is a systematic method to entrap the middle class and the poor. How do I know this? Because roughly 60% of those who are in the U.S. are living paycheck to paycheck as of right now. Some would argue it's all the way up to 70%. And the year prior to that, in 2021, was about 10% less. So there are more, despite all of this money that's been printed, all these stimulus packages that are there to help the middle class and the poor, that has entrapped them to be living paycheck to paycheck. And the proof is there in the stats that more and more Americans are living paycheck to paycheck. As a matter of fact, there are 50%, roughly 50% of those who are making over six figures, that's over $100,000 a year, are still living paycheck to paycheck. You heard me right. 50% of those making six figures or more are still living paycheck to paycheck in the U.S. You would think that that was like the goal, right? That's like the dream is you go to college and you get some $80,000 a year job, $100,000 a year job. Well, those individuals are still living paycheck to paycheck, probably because they have a ton of debt, maybe from their student loans, maybe from an overpriced home. This is what is happening now under this Keynesian model that has been put on the population in 1971 until now. And we're now just seeing just how bad it becomes with these Keynesian models. Because back prior to 1971, you actually had something to hold down the corruption in a way. You know, you had to actually have some sort of proof, some sort of accountability to your money supply. But now it is just complete chaos. And now who wins in a chaotic system? If you are allowed to get loans for very cheap, if money is printed and it is just injected into the economy, who wins there? Well, those who know how to game the system win. Those who know how to leverage win. If you want to get extreme wealth, you need to understand how to leverage. It is literally impossible to get extreme wealth without having leverage in it. At least that's my personal opinion and many others. But let's go over to some of these charts over here I want to show you that I have pulled up. So this is the M1. It's, every time I look at this chart, it blows my mind. I know a lot of this money is locked up in banks and different ways of being electronic money. So when they say they printed money, they didn't actually print it. They digitally inject it. But what's crazy here is this is basically the overall money supply. And in the 70s, it was in the billions. And now it is in the 20 trillion range, almost 21 trillion now of M1 supply. So basically in 19 in in 2020 prior to all the stimulus packages this just shows how much they really printed it was around 4 trillion in circulating M1 supply. Now it is over 20 trillion. So literally 5x more dollars in circulation. I've talked about this in prior videos if you're subscribed to the channel. If you're not subscribed to the channel, please do take that quick second to hit that subscribe button. Really appreciate it cuz I'm trying to grow this channel. Really really appreciate it if you did that. Um but Yeah, I would like to change the whole 80% of dollars in circulation. That's what we've heard is 80% of dollars in circulation happened over the last two years. I would argue it's 500% more dollars in circulation in the last two to three years. So it's really insane to see that. And that's what causes the S&P to go from where it was here and just all this money to flood into the S&P because there's a bunch of printed fake money out there. You print a bunch of fake money, you go under a Keynesian model, it all gets injected into the stock market. So even though we've seen a crash recently and it pulled down a little bit over this last year, still, if you pull up the five year, it's still up quite a bit since the beginning in 2020 when they printed all of this money, it's still up quite a bit and has a lot of room to drop in my personal opinion. Now, the next thing I want to talk about is some of these charts that I've pulled up over here. And this is basically just showing how bad the wealth gap is and what really caused it. So the first thing is this one over here in the left-hand corner. So this is in 1971. You can see this is growth in productivity and hourly compensation since 1948. In 1948, you can see that productivity and compensation was going in parallel. They were both going up together. 
And they were, and then suddenly, when we detached from a gold standard and you went to a Keynesian model, there was the ability for the rich to leverage, to basically take advantage of this new Keynesian model. And you saw productivity going up, but compensation went flat. That's because those who hold the assets got more and more of the wealth. Um, and that is what caused this crazy gap between co compensation and productivity. And I'd argue it's a lot worse now because this is only going to 2017. Shout out to um, the website WTF happened in 1971.com. Shout out to them. I think that that is an incredible website. I don't have enough time to go through every single chart on that website, but highly recommend it um, for those who want to know. Now, this is the inflation rate up here in the top right. We're supposedly going to believe that it's 8.3%, but if you saw the M1 supply, how much money was really injected into the economy, <laughs> it's hard to believe that inflation is going down. I don't know about anybody else, but I went to the gas pump the other day, and I was looking around, and I saw the faces of people that are pumping gas, and I, I'm in a, I feel like I'm in a fortunate position, and I'm, it doesn't it doesn't stress me out per se, but I noticed that when I was looking around, I go, wait a minute, this is actually really hurting people. This isn't just like a joke anymore. Like, oh, wow, our gas is now, I went from 20 to now costing 35 a gallon. Now, or not 35, but 35 to fill up the tank. Now, people that are used to pay, you know, $50 to fill up their tank, $30 to fill up their tank are paying 100 150 to fill up their tank. I know that I felt it because to fill up my tank in, uh, in my car it used to be around like 30, 40 bucks. And now it's like $60, $70, $80 to fill up my tank. And all of my groceries cost a lot more money. All of my, the meat that I buy, everything that I, I'm buying, I'm noticing is costing way, way more than 8.3%. So that data, I don't believe it. I don't believe it at all. Now, the next chart I wanted to show here is just how this wealth gap happens. So the way this wealth gap happens is this is 2021 Global Income and Wealth Inequality. Notice how the blue is the bottom 50% of the world in, uh, in wealth. So the bottom 50% accounts for 8.5% of the income in 2021. Now notice, they only hold 2% of the wealth. So despite having 8.5% of the income, they only have 2% of the wealth. That goes down right there. Now, what does that mean? It means they're living paycheck to paycheck. They are not able to accumulate assets like this, these assets here are real estate because they get stuck in that system of living paycheck to paycheck because, again, they are working for, if you have deflationary wages that are paid in an inflationary currency, you are essentially being entrapped. That's why I would argue that if they really cared, why tax the poor at all? Why tax the middle class at all? Because they are already being entrapped by this Keynesian model that they created. Next, you can, you can look at the middle 40%. So these two account for the 90% the of the world. So the blue and the green is 90% of the global wealth. So 40% and 8.5% is 90% of the world in their, is, this is accounting for 90% of the world. So of income worldwide, it's roughly 50% of the income in 2021 is in that bottom 90%. The red is the top 10%. Now, what's crazy is if you bundle these together, you're going to get a figure of just under 50%. So just under 50% of the world's income in 2021 accounts for 24% of the wealth. So although they got 50% of the income in 2021, the bottom 90% of the world, they only account for 24% of the wealth. So half of that, it goes down in half. Now, what's interesting here is you, now you look at the top 10%, and this is who wins in the Keynesian model when they print money to oblivion, when they do all these stimulus packages. Who wins? Well, those who hold the assets win. Those who know how to use the current system to leverage win. Whether it's getting these cheap loans. At the beginning of all this, loans were extremely cheap. Interest rates were pretty much zero for a very long time. So it was very, very cheap to get loans and leverage yourself. And the rich know how to do that. So what's interesting is although you saw this 50% go down to 24% with actually holding their wealth, that proves that the bottom 90% is living paycheck to paycheck pretty much. The rich, the top 10%, went from 52% of, although they only have 52% of the income, which I say only, that's a lot. They have 50, more than 50% of the income in 2021. They have 76% of the world wealth. It goes up. 
So this goes down for the bottom 90%, but the top 10%, it goes up because that's what tells you they are living, they are not living paycheck to paycheck. They get a paycheck, they make money, and they put it into their pocket. It's not about what you make, it's about what you keep. And the rich know how to keep it. That's just point blank what it is. And so when all the stimulus packages were going on, although people thought it might help them, I would argue the best way to steal from somebody or to entrap somebody is to not let them know they're being entrapped or stolen from at all. And most of the population doesn't even know how bad it really is, although it's starting to come to light now with all the rising prices of everything, even though we're told that inflation is going back down a little bit. I highly doubt that. They're also going to be raising rates, which means it's going to be harder for that poor, the poor and the middle class to get to being wealthy because it's going to, the rates are going to be more expensive to get these loans. So their ability to leverage, the rich already got the ability to leverage. Now, when the poor and the middle class want to be able to leverage to get a home or to get some of these assets or to build their business, they're going to have to pay higher rates because interest rates are going up. Now, over here, this is the last chart I wanted to show here, is change in total net worth since the end of the Great Recession. So the blue is the bottom 50%, the yellow is the top 1%, and the gray is the 90 to the 90th percentile. So basically, these two, the, the gold and the gray is the top 10%, and these are the bottom 90%. So this is the 50th to the 90th percentile is the orange. Now, look at what happened since the Great Reset. They call that the Great Recession um, in 2009. I would like to see this chart go a little bit further back, but this is starting in 2009. But look at how close everything was correlated in 2009 between all of the categories, uh, between the bottom 50%, 50th to 90th percent, 90 to 90th percentile, and the top 1%. It was all very correlated. And then look at this detachment that has happened. This is what happens when you print a ton of money. The rich get extremely rich because they have the assets and the poor get stuck. It doesn't make it any more clear. Look at the gap. When you, when the, the title of this video might be something along the lines of um, the wealth gap. This is the chart to look at when you're looking at a wealth gap. Like it doesn't get more clear than that. Um, it's insane. And it's not going to be getting any better anytime soon. So... What is the way out of this? The way out of this is to understand what custody is. What was different in 1971, back in this chart, what was different here? Well, the money actually proved that you had custody. When you look at this chart, people had custody of their money because their money was back to gold and silver. Now, custody is given up. Everyone gives up their custody. So let me go back to screen. Hopefully this isn't too much of a rant, but I just wanted to talk about how big this wealth divide really is because when I got back from the grocery store, uh, I saw it. I saw people really struggling there and it, I felt it in my wallet as well. And I was just sitting there at this gas station. I saw the looks on everybody's faces and I'm like, people are actually not going to be traveling anymore. And it seems like a, almost a systematic approach to make people have to live paycheck to paycheck. And I would argue it's working because we're seeing an increase, and the statistics prove this, we're seeing an increase in people that have to live paycheck to paycheck. Again, even those that are over six figures, those who are making over 100000 a year, are living paycheck to paycheck. 50% of those individuals making over 100000 a year are living paycheck to paycheck. This is why on my channel, and if you've been a subscriber on my channel, you know what I talk about. And how I got ahead personally is by lowering my overhead as much as possible. Don't drive a fancy car to impress your friends. So I and I want to I want to bring up these points here on how to escape from this system. One of, the reason I pulled out these silver bars is it's because it's eye candy and clickbait. It's that. But on top of that, I want people to know what custody means. Each one of these bars represents 100 ounces of silver, is 100 ounces of silver, and I own it. It's on my desk. I have custody of it. I don't have to go to a bank and beg for my money. I don't go into their Keynesian system. I have control of it, whether it's Bitcoin, whether it's gold, whether it's silver, whether it's a collectible, anything tangible. You have control of your money, and my mission is to teach more people what excuse me, having custody of your assets really means what custody really is, and how much custody do you really have? How much is stuck in their system? So how do you escape this? 
the real truth that would actually help people is to stop taking these crazy loans to go to college would be the first step. How many of these kids actually are financially competent that are accepting these $100,000 plus loans to go to college? It's sad, and that's a way to entrap people. The government shouldn't have any role in our college system. The government shouldn't have any role in our health care. The government shouldn't have any role in, in all of these things that they, they entangle themselves in. What happens? The costs go up because they are like children with a checkbook. And now they're giving these crazy loans to the kids. And then now, why is it in the... If they cared, if they actually cared, why do they have stipulations that make it so that if someone goes bankrupt when they're building their business, they don't owe anybody anything. They can just file for bankruptcy and get out of it with a Chapter 7. But if you try to go bankrupt with a college loan... You can't get out of it. It's with you until death. Why is that? If they cared so much. If it was all about, oh, tax the rich, help the poor. If it was like that, why is it so built to entrap the middle class and the poor? When you look past all the smoke and mirrors, you realize, wait a minute. I don't think if my goal was to entrap the middle class and poor and make them live paycheck to paycheck, I don't think I could have done a better job than those in power over the last, you know, 30 years. I don't no 50 years, excuse me, since 1971. But as of recently, the last like few years, I don't think I could have tried harder to destroy the economy and entrap the middle class and the poor. So how do you get out of this? Keep your overhead as low as possible. I remember when I was trying to get ahead, um, I basically lived as low as possible. I calculated every single dollar that I would spend. So if it was whether it was going to, for, to get groceries or whether it was my rent, I made sure that my overhead was way less than what I'm making. And it sounds so simple. Spend less than you make. But that is how the rich get rich, is they have more capital to spend and they don't live paycheck to paycheck. How are you ever going to get rich if you're living paycheck to paycheck? It's just not possible. How are you ever going to escape that paycheck to paycheck lifestyle if you don't put anything in your pocket every single month? If you got a car, you shouldn't be driving. If you buy clothes that you shouldn't be wearing. People think that I wear fancy clothes. Still to this day, I buy stuff off Amazon. This is like a $20 shirt. People think that I'm wearing a gaudy watch. This is an investment that has only gone up in value. Everything that I do is not to be wasteful of money. I keep my overhead as low as possible. And if you keep your overhead low, you are able to take more and more risk. And that is how the rich get rich, is they actually are able and capable of taking risk. And then they study basically what they're going to do. And also, not only that, but they have their time. If there's one thing I notice with the very uh, with wealthy individuals is they have 100% control of their time. When they wake up in the morning, they choose what they're going to do. Now, their odds are they're very effective and they work very hard, but they have control of their time and how they spend their time. If I've noticed one thing about the poor, it's that they tend to be told what to do with their time. They're stuck working some dead-end job. They're, they have a bunch of debt. Whatever it might be, there's something sucking their time away from them, and they're not able to focus on accumulating wealth to basically make it so that you don't have to give up your time. So I would argue the most important thing, if, if somebody wants to escape the hamster wheel and dig through the cage, so to speak, it's spend time alone, get as much capital as you can together to pay for you know three, four months if you had no, no income coming in, and take some big risk. But the truth is, is you just got to keep that overhead as low as possible. And there, it's so funny to me how much of the population is unwilling to lower their standard of living for a year so that they can not have the terrible, what they would might consider a terrible life in the future. They can have a better life if they just lowered their, their cost of living for a year or two, and then they could have a life that they always dreamed about if they just had, could do that. So maybe you have an apartment that you shouldn't be in. Maybe you're paying $3,000, $2,000 a month for an apartment that you shouldn't be driving. Maybe you're trying to keep up with the Joneses next door and you have a fancy car you shouldn't be driving. Maybe you should get rid of those things and you should downgrade. You know, live off beans and rice for a while. Keep your overhead as low as possible. If you spend $5,000 a month and you only make six, find out how you can spend $2,000 a month and keep four. Right? That's pretty much the video. That's what I wanted to talk about in this, just to show you just how bad it's really becoming. And... I don't see it getting any better. I see this divide only getting further and further apart. 
And all I can do is try to escape it and teach others how to escape it because it's really sad because I genuinely think that they, those who are in control of the monetary system, it almost seems that it's their goal to entrap everybody except for those who have the assets, those who have the real estate, those who have silver, gold, collectibles, all of these things. Those are the ones who are going to benefit because they know how to game the system. Uh, and we're seeing that right now. So that's the video. Hopefully it helps in some way other than just talking about how bad it really is. Hopefully it answers some questions on how to get ahead. I think just lowering your cost of living right now is so important. Don't be spending all of the money that you make. Um, and it's so easy to do today with all these advertisements and the type of world that we live in today. It's such a consumer based world. Try to keep your overhead as low as possible in that world and don't try to impress anybody but yourself. Thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, would really appreciate it if you smash the like button. I know some people say that and you're like, eh, I don't know if I'm going to do it. But if you actually spend the time to click that, take that one second to click the like button, helps my videos reach out to more people. Um, if you're a new to my channel and you want to subscribe to the channel, would really appreciate that. All of my videos are unedited. Um, it's just the way that I do these. So hopefully you liked it. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you at the next video.